Monday, Monday, Monday. Does Tim Kroenke finally win some NBA hardware? Nuggets Heat Game 5 tonight. First baskets coming up. If you haven't done first baskets, it's so easy. Who's going to score the first basket? Tell me right now. We will put it on our show. Your tweet, I've on the air. Uh, is it Joker? Is it Bam? Is it Marie? Let's go. And it's a lot of fun over on FanDuel Sports. We don't need to be on FanDuel Sportsbook or in a state that participates. You can just hit it right here. We will have lots of fun together for Game 5. I can't believe the Nugs might take this thing. The Chicken Nuggets, according to Rashad White. Also, Tom Brady, Mr. Beast, who's actually the biggest star? D-Hop gets the Royal Vrabel treatment from the Titans. Darius Butler breaks down that and other NFL storylines. And we welcome uh, an old friend, Golden Tate, of Fail Mary Fame, to talk. Pete Carroll, uh, pickleball, apparently, Jalen Hurt sliding into third. That wasn't okay. Happy Monday. Let's do it. Happy to be back home in my studio. Lots of New York. And then I don't know how I haven't been here in like two weeks. Eric, you've you've aged a year. Brian, I haven't seen you in forever. <laughs> how are we doing? Great. It's good. great to have you back. Thanks. Yeah. I'm excited. We have That's good so guests fun. today. Oh, Darius awesome Butler, show. who we love. Best show yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We were fighting in the morning meeting about who's going to who's gonna get the Jalen Hurts question. Because Jalen Hurts sliding into third, kind of a no-no, highly paid guy. But if he didn't go 100%, I would be mad that he didn't do it. He's your franchise guy. You gotta, you gotta pause at third. You can't, you can't be doing a hop slide there. Was there like skin missing from his shin? Yeah, he bloodied himself. No. <laughs> You don't like to see it. I think we're, we'll see who gets that question. Golden Tate is here, Super Bowl champion. And we have Darius Butler, of course, to break down NFL storylines. You've got the NBA action game five tonight. We'll see who can uh, do the damage and who gets the first basket. We'll make those calls. But, yeah, definitely tweet the show with who you think makes the first basket. We will get those tweets rolling throughout this hour. But to, to go to the NFL world, uh, DeAndre Hopkins had his visit with the Titans last night, okay? And we don't really know how it went, but we know how he probably feels, because he got the royal treatment. It always feels good to be treated well going into a job interview, a little, you know, wine and dine, give me the caviar, the roses, the whole thing. Uh, You know, and we probably aren't going to hear much about this until he signs there or elsewhere, but this update from DeAndre sort of spoke for itself. And I do find it interesting that while Vrabel has downplayed this, really at every turn, like, oh, we won't be recruiting, recruiting. We're not recruiting anyone. DeAndre's gonna come in and work out like anybody else would show up and work out. You think everybody else is getting treated like that? Come on. Okay, Tennessee had the Photoshop of DeAndre in a freaking Titans jersey, ready to welcome him in. I mean, I, I think part of the sale should be that they're gonna bring back those Oilers jerseys. You know DeAndre's a fashion guy. Where's that mock-up? And uh, then you had D-Hop. I believe, at a Tim McGraw concert. Now, it was, I think it was like CMA week over in Tennessee last night. So the city's a buzz. It's a perfect time to get him in there. And this was, a, he was at La Nissan Stadium. I don't know if we have the tw- the Instagram store, oh, but he was in. He was there and having a good time. I wonder, is that like him and Rabel? Is Traylon Burks? Probably not. Probably not invited after what he was caught saying last week about not wanting to add anybody and liking the receivers that they had. Now, I'm not saying that this means you know, they're whining and dining and pulling out all the stops in Nashville. But I do think Vrabel wants to probably make this happen a little more than he's letting on in the press conferences. And there's another team throwing their hat in the ring as well with Rap Sheet saying that, and everybody knows this, it's old news from last week, that the uh, the old Arizona Cardinals wide receiver is set to visit the Patriots later this week. So... I don't know. We talked about the Patriots as one of the options for him last week. Um, We talked about Tennessee as one of the options. But this was in a category New England was a a likely candidate, a likely suspect to sign Nuke because we went through evidence on evidence that Bill Belichick is sort of obsessed with DeAndre Hopkins and has been for a long time. Lots of quotes about him, lots of meaningful exchanges between the two. Um, and, And I said this last week, and I still have one question here, and it is, you know, about D-Hop, obviously, and Bill O'Brien. And, you know, we can start with what D-Hop has put on record concerning the Patriots as a destination, because you got to remember this from April. First destination, we're going to go with the New England Patriots. All right. What is that face? Like, Hamilton's like, that face speaks volumes. What, why do I, what is that face? I don't know. What am I reading into here? He's looking at his 
you know, agent or whoever put him in that interview and he's like, why did you put me, like, what kind of a position did you put me in? Like, I, is that, is that, is that, that, see that, that's a bad freeze frame. And this is the problem with the world. This is not, he just sort of looks and says like, I don't want to, it's probably because like, I'd love to go to New England. I'm not going to say, if I say anything, Bill Belichick will literally end me and end the conversation because he knows how they are up there. So it, I don't know what to make of that. Uh, but do I think it means he's saying, I don't want to go there? Or like Mac Jones, I don't believe in him or not. I don't know how much of that, you know, has to do with Bill O'Brien. That's the question, right? But clearly something has shifted because he's taking a visit to New England if, in fact, that was a sort of I don't want to be there thing at all, which I actually don't take it as. Uh, and the Bill O'Brien thing is the big factor here because the Patriots check a lot of other boxes. They need a number one. They need a dominant guy. Belichick loves him. They have the money, so it fits there. Like, the figures add up. They're going to be in the mix as long as Belichick is the head coach, no matter how tough that division is. But things, by all things that we know, ended not great between Bill O'Brien and Nuke in Houston. And if that relationship can't be mended, which hopefully it can be, it's not going to work, right? And if there was legit bad blood here, DeAndre told SI back in 2020, there was, quote, no, was no relationship between the two of them. That's not, I don't, well, and he told writer Greg Bishop, quote, make sure you put that in there. Like he wanted that out there. So he also alleged that O'Brien made, made some uh, other unsavory comparisons between Nuke and another former player and some negative stories about Hopkins practice habits did start leaking around that time as well. So it was ugly. So the ray of hope would be when Bill O'Brien was fired by the Texans in October of that year, DeAndre said he wishes bad on nobody. And that, you know, quote, hopefully he can have success somewhere else. That's nice. That's a little nicer. Maybe we're working up to something. And maybe that place is New England. I think DeAndre's presence there would be, uh, would all but assure that this Patriots offense would be a success this season. Okay, we all have other, whew, sorry, I didn't think I'd go seven minutes on DeAndre Hopkins. That was really long and that's, sorry, off-season vibes. Um, we also heard from Saquon Barkley yesterday. He confirmed that he will not be at Giants mandatory minicamp. He says the following to summarize basically, he says that he's not trying to reset the running back market. He wants a fair deal and it doesn't sound like the Giants have met his expectations there yet. But the part that sort of stands out to me here is that he mentions uh, how he wants to be compensated for his contributions to the team on the field and in the locker room. And that's a reasonable ask, okay? Because there has been no one that you can point to in the NFL that has been more crucial to any, or on that team rather, more crucial to any of the success that they have had over the last five years than Saquon. Look, any win he has a hand in, and when he's not out there, it's not pretty. And this is where it gets tricky because the Giants can't negotiate this next contract for what he's done in the past. That's what he's done. What are you going to be in the future? This deal has to be based on the value that they think he's going to have and bring them going forward. Now he is, and I will remind everyone because everyone thinks Saquon's played in the league for 10 years. He's a, he's, he's a baby. He's 26 years old still, 26. And he's got a little time, okay? The, over the devaluing of the position, okay, and some of the durability concerns have to be taken into account here by the front office as they sort of come to terms. Saquon means so much to this team and this organization. I think he'll continue for years to come to be that guy, and I really hope that they can come to terms on something that works for everyone. But the Giants front office is already in the process of digging itself out of a hole from the previous regime, and one misstep here in how they sort of structure this deal could put them right back at the bottom of it because it might be the toughest deal to navigate in the entire league this year, and I do not envy either side and people are split like I have a lot of Giants fans in my life and half of them are saying I love Saquon like they recognize everything he's done but they're like do not pay him do not give him it's you know it's the the ruthlessness of the business and I'm curious you know like Golden Tate and Darius Butler's takes on this and then the other half is like give him what you know like it's a it's is that an emotional decision to give him tons of money what is the in between and can they get there in a hurry they have till mid-July to sort of figure it out, I think. So, uh, you know, Godspeed to both sides. And of course I say, Hamilton, you know, in, in the words of the great Nate Burleson, pay the man. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, gotta pay everybody. Hamilton? No, that's it. Go ahead. Yes. Please. 
<laughs> Please, my friend. No, it's, yeah, with Saquon, it's, um, you know, he does mean so much to that organization. It is different than most running backs that you have to deal with because he does so much, as he mentions, in the locker room and on the field and his versatility and all that. It has to be taken into consideration. I don't envy Joe Shane here at all because it's, it's going to be tough. Mm. Um, okay, so you're you're so ridiculous. You're wearing this um, <laughs> sick, by the way. I love this red. This is... And if your mom got you this, well done, because you know she buys all of your clothes. <laughs> so I'm loving this. But this is you. You know, I send you. Basically, here, here's our relationship. There's some like you know, like I sent you the thing about Saquon and said we should definitely put that in and like whatever. And you're coming up with what the yeah. what the structure of the show should look like. So we have that relationship. But mostly, I send you like snake videos and like mm-hmm. shark attack videos. I like made you watch a man get torn apart by a shark in the Red Sea. That was horrifying. And I, I thought, I thought yeah. about it before I sent it to you. I'm like, you shouldn't send this to anyone. And I said, I have to send it to Hamilton. So I give you this influx of that. And in return, lately, I'm getting an influx of this maniac freak athlete that plays for the Reds. And you're, you literally are obsessed with this guy. I am. Um, <laughs> and so is all of Cincinnati, it seems like. Uh, he's just, you know... Ellie De La Cruz called up last week by the Reds has just taken the league by storm. And, and we all saw the home run. That ball has a family. Um, what an incredible call. Ooh. But uh, he's he's routinely hitting these balls 115, 120 miles per hour. Uh, he was doing it at the minor league level, tearing it up. And it's not just the power. You see the, the speed with him as well. Um, th- this play from yesterday is just absolutely ridiculous. It's a routine ground ball to first base, and he beats it out. He's doing things that ah. just don't make any sense at all. <laughs> and he's huge. He's 6'5". Like, none of, the, none of the stuff this guy's doing makes any sense. And I know people are like, oh, calm down. He just got called up. But I don't know. It's hard not to be excited when you watch this guy because we've never – really seen a player like this it's yeah. it, it's unique and it's so much fun and i know um all those Bengals fans and yeah. your mentions are <laughs> are blowing them up and, it's and so funny. trying to get you on the bandwagon too yeah, for sure it's so funny when like a jonas gray pops on the scene and like even if like you don't it's like it's so celebrated in the nfl like we love when like dearness like somebody does their thing and like does something crazy in baseball it's mm-hmm. so like no it's just don't like i was tweeting about this guy this this kid and this guy no voto uh, he's still like Votto, whatever his name is he's still he's yeah. in charge of the team he's still the face of the franchise and i'm like calm nobody brought him up like he's been playing 90 years calm down i'm still getting his name wrong but you know what like my mom who speaks polish and is 72 gardening like she knows about ellie because ellie's hitting 491 feet bombs like it's crazy let's celebrate the thing and in that vein and you're talking about Cincinnati our friend I mean a legend Dan Horde put this tweet out and I thought it was interesting um because he started talking about how you know Joe Burrow Ellie Acosta like does anybody have more fun and charismatic sports stars than Cincinnati right now so we were thinking about you know obviously Cincinnati New York is really excited you got the Giants we just talked about the Jets with Aaron Rodgers all of that Knicks Rangers all of that Miami having the time of their life. We have their poster boy, Darius Butler, on our show, The Heat, The Panthers. But which NFL city is sort of going to be the most excited or be taking over the sports world next? What do you think? Quickly. Well, you know, Vegas and KC are having their moments, but I, I yeah. really I really think it's going to be Baltimore. I think with Lamar in the fold Ooh. going forward, um, Roquan to lead that defense. You see him there throwing out the first pitch in the Orioles game. And that brings me to the point. The Orioles are back. They have the second most wins in baseball right now. They have so many fun young stars, and I feel like they're ahead of schedule. Adley Rushman, Gunnar Henderson, Felix Batista has become the best closer in baseball. And they have Jackson Holiday hasn't even gotten called up yet. Uh, And he might be the best out of all of them. And I know you're a little familiar if that name, Holiday, sounds familiar. Is that Holiday's Yes, that's Matt Holiday's son. Yes. Yeah. Matt Holiday, he looked like Steve from the the um, Jerry's the rest in peace to um, uh, what's the show I'm talking about? Oh, Jerry Springer Show. Jerry Springer Jerry show. show. Rest in peace to Jerry Springer. He 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 had that. He was like him and Erlacher had a baby, and it was Matt Holiday, <laughs> and he was bigger than everybody and nicer than everybody, and he was like so gregarious and wonderful, and that's his kid. That's super fun. Yeah. I will say, I will meet that. Uh, well done by you. I'll say, and I, Vegas is very interesting because they're like are acquiring more sports teams, and that's a lot of fun. You picked Baltimore, which doesn't have an NBA team. They don't have like that's a. 
but but they're so passionate about their fan bases, and they like that, and they got the Lamar deal done. We've had so many Ravens on our show, which has been great, Marcus Williams included, uh, Patrick Queen, all those guys. But I'm going to go with Denver, okay, because the Nugs are about to win this thing. They're dominating the NBA Finals. Joker, Joker is entering the GOAT big man. You Nobody know wants to say it, but he is, okay? He's entering the greatest of all time big man discussion. No offense, Jack. And, you know, they're not going, I don't know why we're showing Sean Payton there. Hi, Sean. Uh, but they're not going to disappear anytime soon. And, you know, the Avalanche, they just won what, last year-ish? Sure. They just won yeah. another, you know, Stan Kroenke vibe, like he's a winner. And now the Broncos have that guy that we just showed, Sean Payton on board, okay? I've talked to a bunch of his new players this off season, off the show, on the show. And ev there's not one person who's like, I don't think it's gonna change. Everyone's like, just wait. Just wait to see how he revamps his thing and what he's gonna, what's gonna happen with him running the show there and all the little details. Just to, for one example, here's Patrick Sertan and what he had to say. We're just going to meet him and talk with him. You can understand why, you know, he's one of the best coaches just by his personality. So, you know, he acts just like us as kids, but, yeah. you know, in a good way, in a positive way. So, uh, yeah. you know, he's a great coach in general all around, but, you know, his personality speaks volumes. That smile is all you need to see. And we, I, mean, we've talked, I mean, we've talked to Old Saints about it. We talked to Marcus Williams about it. There's a, you know, a whole situation. Um, Mark Ingram, everybody. We'll see how it translates on the field, but I stand by this Kareem Jackson. Everyone's so excited. I think Sean Payton might have been the biggest acquisition. I'm, Sean Payton is the biggest acquisition any team made this offseason. I called A.J. Brown last year as being the best acquisition before the season even started, and nobody was like, Wah. Sean Payton's going to be the biggest difference maker. And that should be an award, the game changer for a single team. And it should be able to go to a coach, and it should go to Sean Payton. Now, Sean Payton's pretty great. You know who else is pretty great? Pete Carroll as an NFL coach. How long is he going to play? Anybody surprised he's going like this? Golden Tate will be joining us on the program, so we'll talk to him about Gino, Matthew Stafford, and all of that. But my BFF! is up here next, the man, man and Woman podcast. Here it is, Darius Butler, Kay Adams, after this. Move, a nine-year NFL veteran. He's got the moves. I just saw those defensive back in Pride of South Florida, which we will get to. And the only person that could possibly know the nanny or the butler from the nanny, that is Darius Butler. The babysitter, How are you? the nanny, the <laughs> butler. It all makes sense. What up, Kay? Good morning. Listen, I'm okay. I'm, I'm easy breezy because I got no stakes in the game. You, my friend. <laughs> We, we got a little something to talk about. Your back's up against the wall, DB. Your Florida Panthers in your heat. Yeah. They're down 3-1 respectively in their final series. How are we feeling going into these game fives? Yeah, no, not feeling great. You know, nobody wants to be down 3-1. Uh, but these are two teams, the Panthers and the Heat, both both teams full of dogs. You know, and it starts with their coaching. It starts with the culture. So um, I think we'll fight. I think we'll extend both of these series. But uh, I got a little more faith in my Heat, I must be honest, because those Golden Knights on the ice, they they look like the absolute real deal. Same with Joker, too. And I heard your, I heard your take earlier saying he's entering that GOAT conversation when it comes to the big man. I got to agree with you. He, he, you. he, he finishes this championship like run uh, with his with his resume. And, uh, of course, we of course uh, we expect him to play um, a lot longer. But uh, he would definitely be on that Mount Rushmore of centers if he finishes this thing out. It's so true. And I love that you're saying that. You might not have faith in your in some of these, uh, these teams. And I like that you think both of them will extend it and win these game fives. Of course. I okay. have faith in you because you, my friend, you nailed the first basket bet. And it was a boosted bet. And those are so tough. And those are like, you never, these, this is like the toughest bet ever, but it's so fun. It's my favorite one. You picked Bam and you won for our viewers and for our FanDuel family. So thank you. And I'm going to make, I picked Jamal Murray for tonight who you got oh uh i see you switching sides on me i, I yes. see that i, I see Just i see it love. but you know what let me see the i'm always looking for value definitely not going max Struess. he's been stinking it up so far <laughs> you know what i go with the guy who wanted give me bam again at okay. plus 550 and uh shout out to FanDuel too for giving us that two for one last time that was a great great bet i think plus 330 it was that yeah uh but uh take, i'll take bam again why we're, not we're running it back with bam shout out to shams and company of part of our FanDuel family we love to see it all right and if yep. you guys know who your first bet, basket bets are guys hit us up
at Up and Adam Show. We'll get some of your tweets uh, on the air here. Now, since last time we talked to you, you know, we were throwing around where Dalvin should go if he's released. Yep. Then he got released. I mentioned Denver. You were talking about Miami because you'd love to see him there, even though they've got a loaded backfield. Uh, what are your thoughts now? Is there another team that we aren't giving enough love or thought to about this? I mean, honestly, it's a, it's a lot of teams that could use uh, Dalvin Cook. Just like I said it last time I was on the program, still in the prime of his career. And I've seen a lot of people echo those sentiments. He's a great player, still in the prime of his career. I thought, you know, Ravens could be a good spot. Okay. But then I'm going out there in L.A. with the Rams. The uh, Rams obviously got rid of a ton of people. I know Cam Akers still in the backfield, another Florida State alum uh, running back back there. But I think Dalvin Cook and that offense, everyone, when you think about Sean Payton, when you think about Sean McVay's offense, okay. most fans, most people think about the passing numbers and all the records that Drew Brees and Matt Stafford have. But it starts with that run game with both of those offenses, the, the run game, the play-action pass game, off of that run game. So I think Dalvin Cook, in that Rams offense, obviously they need a bounce back year. I think he'll be tremendous for them. I have no clue what the salary cap is for them. No clue what Dalvin Cook wants to be paid. It's tough for that running back market. Uh, but as far as on the field, I think uh, him with the Rams would be a great match. Should we just accept what's going on with the running back market? And I, by the way, the Rams, I've not heard anybody connecting the dots to the Rams, and it makes a lot of sense, and like, they would be lucky to have him. We don't know what Matthew Stafford even looks like. Mm -hmm. Golden Tate's joining the show in a little bit. Maybe he'll have a better idea since they're so close. Um, but there's a bigger discussion here. I mean, I saw over the weekend Josh Jacobs – I looked, yeah. I was like, what's going on? He still has not signed his franchise tag, okay? He sent this tweet out. Sometimes it's not about you. We gotta do it for the ones after us. Man, that's heavy. There's meaning to that. Barkley spoke this weekend about his contract situation, going as far as to say he wouldn't rule out sitting out this season. What do you make of this big money contract to running back situation? Is it over? I mean, it, it's tough. We saw Le'Veon Bell kind of derailed his career kind of when he set that year out. So I would hate to see that with any position, especially the running back position. But Saquon, <laughs> the former number two overall pick in New York coming off uh, probably one of his best years, was healthy. He's not getting paid. Josh Jacobs was leading the league in rushing last year. He's not getting paid. Once again, guys in their prime. So it's tough. Uh, and it's the market, it's business. You know, what? what is that market value around a position? Unfortunately, it's not looking great for running backs. The upside of that is we got two running backs drafting in the top 15 this year with uh, Gibbs and Detroit at 12 and then uh, Robinson at eight with the Falcons. So maybe, maybe if they come out and have some great careers early on, it can change some things. But uh, it's tough. It's tough. Part of it is the Super Bowl champions not having – thousand yard rushers for how many years in a row it's a copycat league so it is tough for those running backs so if you got kids out there playing football probably not want to put them in that backfield put them at quarterback corner maybe receiver because it's tough right now for that running back market yeah quickly i do want to ask you just about deandre to pick one because i find mm -hmm. it hilarious i mean vrabel's like we don't we're not recruiting we're not doing it and he's rolling out the red carpet the pj the mock-ups of him in a tight oh, the whole thing they need him the a Patriots. concert last night, too, right? Yeah, Tim McGraw, why not? At Nissan Stadium, where he might be running routes and, you know, scoring his fantasy points for people. Then you've got him going up to New England, where, I mean, he had beef with Bill O'Brien. They'd have to get over that. Who needs him more? Mm -hmm. Where does he fit better? Hmm, D-Hop. D-Hop, once again, I think a guy with – now, I don't think he's in the same point in his career as those other running backs, but um, a guy that can definitely be used in any offense. I would love to see him in like a, a – with a high-powered quarterback, high-powered offense. So, sorry, the Titans nor the Patriots fit that bill. Um, so, give me like Ravens, give me the Bills, give me the Chiefs. Uh, I'm talking about where the, the good just gets better. So I want him to go to a quarterback, a great quarterback, a great situation, somewhere he, we can see him on prime time a ton and getting a bunch of targets. But I would not, absolutely would not want to see him with Ryan Tannehill or Mac Jones uh, being his quarterback. No disrespect to those guys. Do you think it's, do you think the Bill O'Brien thing, like, am I reading into it too much? I mean, they really had it out. <sighs> Yeah, they did, but I, I think I think him and uh, he and Bill Belichick have a great relationship. Yeah. Bill Belichick kind of has that relationship with these great 
um, players, especially receivers for some reason. I used to always see him go and talk to Ocho or whoever that other hmm. top receiver was on the field. So I think they have a good relationship there. And, and we know it's the business of football and it's the business of winning. Um, so if DeAndre Hopkins was to go on that offense, uh, Bill O'Brien would be the OC. And, and Bill O'Brien is still going to be Bill O'Brien. He's going to be empowered by uh, Bill Belichick to be there. So I think DeAndre Hopkins, he's a pro and he'll know how to, how to, how to get in where he fits in in that offense. But once again, would not want to see him in that Patriot offense. Mac Jones, I'm sure, would love him. He would need him. They need yeah. a, a, an upgrade at receiver. But um, the market doesn't seem uh, too hot for DeAndre Hopkins. I'm assuming he wants at least that Odell mo uh, money mm -hmm. coming back. But uh, So we'll see how that all plays out. Uh, well said by you. We talk little NBA. We do a little basketball. And then we go into the world of, like, I have no idea what's going on. And, like, we're not going to talk about tennis. But this thing happened that crossed over into the NFL. Now, Djokovic... Okay. One, wins the French Open. It's incredible, beautiful moment. 23rd Grand Slam title, insane. Tom Brady was in his box, one of his invited guests. Yeah. And then uh, he gave a shout out to Brady in his speech right after he wins on the court. And like Mbappe and a bunch of these like goats that were there. Who would be your dream person at an event to then win and give you a shout out? Like what would that look like? To win and give me a shout out? Yeah. Um, hmm. That's a hell of a question. <laughs> let's go with uh, let's go to F one. This helmet. I love me. F one. Lewis Hamilton. <laughs> okay. I want Lewis Hamilton to get a win, and right now <laughs> it's been tough. Max Verstappen seems to win every week, but let me get Lewis Hamilton out there get a win and say, hey, shout out to DB man. Yeah. He always believed in me. <laughs> uh, so uh, give me give me Lewis Hamilton right now. I did see. Djokovic, and shout out to Serbia too. I mean, what's in the water over there right now with him and the Joker doing their thing? But he also gave Mamba a shout out. He already had his jacket already made, mm -hmm. talking about visualizing and bringing things into existence. So um, he's done some great, great things in that tennis uh, court. So shout out to Djokovic. I just love the fact it'd be like, he'd be like, shout out to my family, to my team, the pit crew, Shakira, and like, DB, you're always wearing that F1 hat and telling all these like non F1 fans about me. Shout out to you, man to man yeah. podcast. Then he puts on a DB hat and he walks off. That would be amazing. Damn Let's right. manifest that. Uh, my question about this whole thing is like, how does Brady have time to do all of this? And I guess private jets are probably the answer. But, and, also be on a $300 million yacht. Like, when did he fit this little video and during the weekend in with Mr. Beast? And and this was crazy. What did you make of this? I mean, Brady, look, Brady's got a lot of free time right now, okay? <laughs> you know, he, he's used to being in full go mode at this point in the year. But now I'm sure he probably, you know, looking around like, damn, what do I do with myself? On a yacht, uh, you know, sending specialized video. That thing with fanatics, but what they did with the yeah, rookies, those videos. Personalized videos. I mean, those are unbelievable. So uh, Brady hitting the drone out of the air. I am interested in how many takes it took, Tommy boy. Uh, but you know, impressive content uh, either way. But uh, so shout out to Brady being everywhere, doing everything. I mean, did we not expect him to also be the goat of retirement as well? So I'm sure he's just getting started. I don't know. He's kind of. He's looking kind of, younger too. Look like he might be aging. I, yeah, so. there's, there's things that can help with that for sure. Do you? Mm -hmm. do you I feel like he's. Uh, I feel like he's edging you for a top off season. Especially, I mean, Florida's got to do their thing. Yeah, it's it's tough. It's always tough to compete with Brady. It's always <laughs> tough. But I mean, Messi. Since since that list came out, I think Messi has came down to Miami as well. So I'm just going right up that list. Shout out to Messi as well. Uh, question for you, because you, you knew Brady way back when. And when I was talking yep. to Gotham Chopra, who who like made the Man in the Arena docuseries, he's very close with Tom. And he was talking about how, you know, post-retirement, he selfishly loves it because he gets his friend like in a way that he never had him. And like they're, oh, you wow. know, they're talking, you know, it's it's it, it almost is like Brady was on another planet. He had like the Ricky Lake isolation booth ears on, took him off, came back and was like, Netflix? What like I, like uh, Postmates? Like what is this? Like he, you know, like <laughs> Tinder? What like? And he's you know learning like what the world is in 2023. Uh, did you or whatever? Did you? Was he like that way back then? Like did he block everything out? Because I remember a Brady, a young Brady. He was like out in New York, like he. He met Giselle somewhere, you know, like he uh -huh. he was a he was a bit of a playboy early in his career. When do you think that switch happened and what was he like back then when it came to a hundred percent ball, no time for anything else? I think he was 
It's probably always like that. You know, it's a balance. You know, you have your in-season, you have your off-season. So uh, when I first became his teammate, it was kind of right before that lockout. And obviously, you know, it was on the different teams and the different leaders to get the teams, you know, together away from the facility and doing their things. And obviously he did great uh, with that. But when it was ball, it was all ball. He was all in regardless of who was on the field. Could be offense, could be defense. Um, you know, during special teams, obviously he was probably doing his own thing. But always been locked in, always been a great leader. Um, but then, you know, I didn't hang out with him much off the field, but the guys that did, you always heard, you know, about the stories of him just being one of the guys. And yeah. I think once he went to Tampa, we started to see a little more of that. And obviously everybody remembers the Super Bowl celebration. And it's like, okay, this guy's kind of like, you know, he he's one of the bros, you know, at the end of the day. And I think we'll see uh, more of that now. You know, he's in his mid-40s at this point, so I'm sure he's living a different life than he was in his mid-20s, but I think he's always kind of had that balance, and then when it was time to lock in, just like MJ, Jordan, he had his own life off the court, yeah. but once he got in that <laughs> building and that facility, it was time to practice, so it was time to play. He was trying to rip your heart out, and uh, I think that's the same with Brady. It's very cool to see, and him and Mr. Beast just doing their thing. I, I mean, I bet he was like Mr. Beast. What's that? but I bet his kids like knew all about it and were all oh, obsessed yeah. with him, and that was that. That probably made Tom Brady cooler than anything he's ever accomplished on the field. Like cool Super Bowl oh, rings, sure fun, but like Mr. Beast, a drone. You hit a drone, and then a guy in a jet ski. Cool. <laughs> uh, you're hey, a big. You're. It's crazy <laughs> what makes you cool with kids. The coolest thing that I've done so far with my kids is <laughs> halftime show Rihanna. This past halftime performance, I tweeted about it. The tweet made the broadcast in the Super Bowl, and that just made <laughs> my teenage daughter's life. She showed all her friends, took a screenshot of it, so that was, I'm still getting cool points for that. I love that that's the thing. It's so funny how things... Listen, thing. I've sat in meetings with, like, executives, even recently, like, big executives that are decision makers that are like, I'm like, how did you come to this? Like, how did you get interested in acquiring this? Or what? Oh, my kid, I just look at what my kid... Like, I'm, like, looking at what my 18-year-old, 11-year-old kid into and I was like that's cool and that's how things yep. happen and I decided it's a pretty amazing thing um golf you're a golf god so I just hope that your teenage oh, yeah. daughter recognizes that at some point but I was you know I seeing their that. signs all over LA about the U.S. Open it's here uh, you know all week long did you see this end to the Canadian Open okay this is Canadian <laughs> <laughs> Nick Taylor it's a 72 foot walk-off putt to win in a playoff what do you think I oh! mean the putt the putt was the putt was unbelievable. Must see TV. First Canadian in a really long time. Not really sure the exact year to actually win the Canadian Open. The crowd was electric, but I mean, <laughs> right after that was even better. That was the best part of it. I think Adam can't remember his last name coming in celebrating, giving the champagne shower, and just getting obliterated on the Let's greens see. Let's see. Uh, like that. Look, look at this. Oh, he's locked in. I see him. I see him. <laughs> Look, get out the way. Out the way. Uh, hey, that's good form right there. You got your head. You're protecting the skull, protecting the dog. JJ sure Watt. Some great power to bring him through there. Looking very JJ Wattish. But I mean, that was very fundamentally sound. Heads up, NFL teach tape right there. So shout out to that security. Just doing his job. You know, just doing his job. But uh, I hope everybody's hope everybody's all right. That I was did a not great, see. <laughs> I did not see four. that. What? What? Listen, that was the first Canadian to win the Canadian Open since 1954. That was 69 years ago. But what would the equivalent to that of that shot? And of course, we have like the the that, that's an amazing move. They're, the Belichick's going to be putting that in the room, making Man. guys watch this. But what's the equivalent to this happening in the NFL? Like the 72 footer here. Oh man, that's that's. <laughs> I don't, I don't even I don't know. know. That would be like an offensive lineman <laughs> getting a squib kick and taking it to the house like <laughs> 72 yards. That's that right. would be the equivalent of that. Like something you almost never see happen. That's something you just want to get it yeah. close enough to get a nice two putt. But 70, I think that's the longest putt, longest walk off putt ever for him. And then uh, longest putt of his career, I believe, as well. So, I mean, unbelievable right there from Nick Taylor. Darius Butler can talk all sports. That's the thing. The most I've, versatile, I've the came. most versatile DB we know. We, listen, we're going on a hiatus. We're going to be, I hate the word hiatus. we got to stop saying it. We're going on vacay uh, at the end of this week. Enjoy your nice summer. Friend. We love you. We love working with you. And we will talk to you soon. We'll see you on the other side. We'll see ya. Good luck to your Florida teams. I don't want to be picking up those pieces and wiping up those tears. Golden Tate, learn how to use Zoom. We'll be back after this on Up and Adams. You know why I'm here. Golden Tate does what he does so well. It's me, no ain't gonna know you know why I'm here. Wow. You know, the end zone part. You know, the adjustment. You know, yeah, you know why I'm here. Yeah. I'm on 
in the field, but he's got pickleball going on. He's a golfer. We got to get to our next guest, a Super Bowl winning wide receiver who played 11 years in the league, winning the Super Bowl with the Seahawks. We've got the Lions, the Eagles, uh, the Giants. And uh, currently, listen, I got to tell you, my friend Golden Tate, and good morning to you, Yak King. I just got a text from a decade long NFL veteran who just said, Golden Tate is the golf god. Is that true? Oh, oh, that is. That's that's big words right there. I wouldn't say golf god, but maybe the the prince right now. <laughs> How's the handicap looking? You know, it's like a five right now. It's a sweet okay. spot where where I want it for the games that I play in. Um, we just actually came off of our member guest tournament this past weekend. I hear. Where we uh, we earned second in our flight, which is not good enough for our standards. See, that's why that's why so many teams loved you. That's why you won a Super Bowl because you have that sort of mentality. Golden, how are you? I'm good. I'm just trying to dominate dad life and pickleball life and golf life, and it's it's good. Huh? Pickleball life. Listen, I I moved to LA, Golden. I don't love it because maybe I need to get into pickleball, which everyone is obsessed with. It's all anybody talks about. There's courts popping up in driveways in Brentwood. Like it's so insane. <laughs> Michael Phelps, Kevin Durant, they just invested in Major League Pickleball. Sell me on why this is cool. Look, I was never a big fan of like going to the gym and like working out, but it was my job, so I had to do it. But I wanted to get a sweat burn calories, move around. And I feel like this is a great sport to do that, but also be social, meet people. Um, and then you don't walk away being sore for like two days. Like as hmm. when I was a kid, I wanted to, you know, when I was young, I wanted to go play basketball in off seasons and then I would golf as well. But as you got, got older, like I couldn't do that. My knees would be achy for three to four days. And so pickleball entered my life and you know, I played ping pong growing up um, and mm. just kind of, you know, started doing that. And funny story is I, I learned pickleball back in 2010, my rookie year. My girlfriend at the time, my wife now, she had a court at their house. And I looked down wow. and I was like, why do y'all have a halfway <laughs> tennis court? Like, That's why not? If you don't do it, if you don't do it, do it right. And they say, no, 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 it's pickleball. I said, what, what, what is pickleball? Who named something pickleball? And then they give me this wooden paddle and a wiffle ball. And I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, this sport is stupid. Like, why would anyone ever play it? But we ended up playing it. I had some fun. Fast forward to years later, moving to San Diego, it started popping up everywhere. And I started getting more serious. And now it's like how I want to spend my time. Uh, it's amazing, and you know, it, it's, it is a little dangerous. You're you're selling me on how cool it is, and listen, you used to dodge the baddest cornerbacks on the field, but apparently, like the net is public enemy number one. I mean, what, take me through this. <laughs> you know, I was trying to be um, pro like athlete, and yeah, and I, it didn't go so well. Maybe I lost a step, and uh, the it, the net is one, and GT is zero. Yeah, well, we love to see. Listen, we got, we got to say, we love you playing golf. We love pickleball, and that's incredible. And you sold me on it, and it's just a great way to meet people, it sounds like, so I'll be into that. We got to talk a little NFL here because I can't wait to just get in your brain about a couple of these topics. The Seahawks, mm -hmm. let's just start there. I cannot believe, it's been like 10 years. It's been 10 years since you were there. 2013 was the last year. So now you have, when, when I think of that, I think of nothing but Pete Carroll. The dude is 71 years old. He'd probably be routing people up playing pickleball out there. He's still working his magic. Last year, everyone was talking, rebuild, how much longer will he play? And then he goes and makes the playoffs with Geno Smith. Golden, why aren't you surprised that he's still coaching and winning at this age in Seattle? You know, because him and Josh Snyder have just been an awesome combo since I, I got there. I came in the same year they did, and they just have, if you look at them traditionally over the last, decade and more they draft well mm. um and that's the biggest thing and, and they're all connected from the top to bottom and the, everything is a partnership there and you just get guys buying in and draft your draftees are developing to be really good players all pro pro bowler type of guys um and then they bring in some guys like Diggs and uh, Jamal Adams if, if he's he's healthy and they just they can fly I think I personally think the Seahawks have a chance to win the division this year. I do too. I'm picking them. I'm like, going I to pick like them. I feel like they almost might be favorites. I mean, if you look at it, like 
Gino is, is, is showed up and will he have the same year he had last year? Maybe, maybe not. We're hoping so. But look, they're filling so many holes on defense yeah. with the draft. Um, and then they brought in Julian Love, who's a smart, versatile safety. Uh, they brought in what uh, Draymond Jones, who's going to get to the quarterback. And, the, and that's where they struggled last year at, at, on defense and get to the quarterback. And if you can get there with, with, with their motto of running the ball, they're going to be all right. I love to hear you say that. Now, when you look at Pete Carroll, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to think who's the division winner. It kind of comes down to quarterback and coaching, right, when you're trying to make those calls this early in it. Is Pete Carroll the best coach in the NFC West? McVay? I believe so. Kyle? I believe so. Why? Yeah. Just just what he's done consistently over, I see, the last 13 years. I mean, they have been right there every single year. And the one year that they was a rebuilding year, they snuck in to the playoffs um, and then earned themselves and, you know, traded Russell away and earned what I think they had like nine draft picks in this draft. Yeah. Two first runners, two seconds. I mean, that is just genius to me. And so they, they're always right there um, and they're consistent every single year. Now, we wish we would have had a few more Super Bowls, but, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. Maybe they get there this year. Who knows? That NFC is like easy pickings, it looks like. Uh, your former quarterback in Seattle, Russell Wilson, I, I looked at, like, what you, if you had any thoughts about him watching him sort of struggle in Denver. You were on the podcast. You said something about, like, he's lost his confidence, like the confidence in the quarterback we had at the helm. I'm not seeing that guy. And he had a tough year objectively, right? And there were some... Some stories that leaked out of the locker room, special treatment, he had a private office. As you're watching him last season struggle, what is going through your head? You know, I feel bad, man. He's been on top of the world for the majority of his career, and his time in Seattle just expired. I mean, it was just time for Seattle to go a different way and him to go a different way from whatever indifferences they had. And um, Denver went and gave away the entire bank for him and for him to get there with so many expectations, feeling so much pressure and not be able to perform. I know that I know that really crushed him. Um, however, if the Russell Wilson I know is working his tail off this this offseason and him partnering with Sean Payton, I think, is going to be magical. Russell Wilson, one of his mentors is Drew Brees, mm -hmm. Drew Brees and Sean Payton were together a long time. Um, I, I can see this really, I can see them really turning it around. Um, they have players around them. Now, they can't let the pressure of what's going on get to them because there's a lot of pressure on Russell and Sean Payton considering what they have given up for these two guys. Right. I mean, there's not too many times I've heard trades and there's a coach involved, right? So if they can get over that, I feel like they, they're going to be fine. Now, unfortunately, the division they're in is very, very, very tough and full of star quarterbacks. And we know quarterbacks and coaches combinations are kind of a winning recipe. But I think they're going to give him a fighting chance. And uh, he's definitely going to have a much better year than he did last season. I think so, too. It's a really tough division. But I think you're right. If Sean Payton, you know, when you said the thing about not eating the pressure a bit, like Sean will not. Sean will not feel pressured and he'll hopefully fix some of those things there so Russell Wilson and those guys can have a better year. Now, you're a baseball guy. You're not just a pickleball guy. You're not just a football guy. You're, you're not just a golf god, says Darius Butler. Oops. Uh, but you are a baseball guy, right? You could have played professionally. I want to get your reaction to this video that circulated this weekend. Jalen Hurts, big ticket item, got paid a bag, and he, you know, he's at <laughs> Devontae Smith's charity softball game. First of all, what do you make of the play? First off, he ain't got no business sliding. <laughs> Talk to me. None. No. I played in the charity softball event um, when I was in Detroit, and I was playing shortstop, and I threw a ball in the home plate to get a, try to get a guy out, and I accidentally hit him in the head. Like, so many things go wrong, and that would have been awful. Um, nice greedy going in the home, home play. That, that is nice, but just got to really be careful. Stay on your feet. Yeah, putting it all on the line in a celebrity softball game. Probably, you know, the, the bloodied chin. Eagles fans can't be happy to see that. Here's another. You're like the king of celebrations, Golden. Literally, we're watching him this morning. So fun. Can you believe the grit? Listen, the Macarena, the Nay Nay, the Stink. Those things all fell off. The Gritty is still alive? How long is the Gritty going to live? 
I think as long as Justin Jefferson's around, it's going to live at this point. But I've really been disappointed in the touchdown celebrations since my departure of the NFL. I I need more creativity. I need more out out of there um, from these guys. And speaking of celebrations, my son came up here a moment ago and was doing some dances trying to distract me. Where is he? And now he's on a Peloton. Come here, son. Come here, bud. Give us a little something. Come here. Hustle up. He's on a Peloton. <laughs> here's what here's what I think it should be. Ready? I think players should, I think Justin Jefferson, or not Justin Jefferson, players who you just called out should walk up and bend over and pretend that they hit a pickleball net like you to pay homage. Okay. <laughs> Hi. Mm. Funny person. Oh my gosh, Golden, he's so cute. And Thank you. Big. This is Golden the Fourth. This is my little jo- my little Joker right here. Um, back to UK. Anyway, yeah. trying to throw shade. <laughs> I do. I woke up this morning thinking, like, yeah, there needs to be a pickleball celebration, but not going into the net, K. Something with a, a, a pickle. I don't know what that would be. We'll workshop it. You and I will figure it out. Golden, I love you. Good to see you. Much love to you and your family. Go master dad life, golf, pickleball celebrations. I mean, and you figured out the, the entire Bronco situation. We love you. Golden Tate, everybody. We'll be back. Bye. All right, let's do it. First basket bets is an up and Adams thing over at FanDuel Sportsbook. I picked Jamal Murray. Here's who you guys picked all over the place. Okay, Eric Gordon, lots of love for him. And Joker, you guys can check out all the odds and the value over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Darius Butler said the value was bam. He's running it back. I'm saying it's Jamal Murray. Hamilton, who you got quick? I'm going Michael Porter Jr. He's had a rough series, but I think he gets it going tonight. Starts it off. I'm sorry, you can't pick Ellie Cruz for this one. Uh, Barton, who you got? I got Aaron Gordon. <laughs> who you got? Uh, I'm going to go with Bam. I'm with Terry. Eric's yeah. with Bam. Who you got? Conrad? Jamal Murray. Jamal Murray. All right, first basket tonight, game five. Congrats to the Nuggets for winning the finals and to Stan Kroenke. Avalanche, Rams, and no Nuggets. The trifecta! We'll be back tomorrow. Thanks, Golden Tate, and thanks, Darius Butler. <laughs>